glorious time of year, and it feels like Christmas out there today. <laughs> so glad you could come together with us and worship us, and you're joining us on the live stream. We are so glad that you're with us today to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, coming in human form to live among us and to teach us and to die as our perfect sacrifice. What an amazing thing to celebrate that we have to celebrate this year. And I want to start today with a scripture from Isaiah chapter 60. If you'd like to stand, we're going to go right into our songs and our worship and our glorifying of the Lord Jesus this morning. And it says this, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you.
thank you for this opportunity. And Lord, what an opportunity it is to gather together with your people in this place today to lift up songs of glorification to you. It's nothing less than we deserve, Lord, and we deserve so much more. We pray that you would accept our worship and our praise today. We love you, Jesus. We love you because you first loved us. We love you because you came to this dark place and you put yourselves in the hand of a young woman and a man that were just humans. And you came here and you were vulnerable and you lived among us and you showed us what love really means. And we thank you for that. You showed us what love was going to do when you went all the way to Calvary on our behalf. When you were willing to die on our behalf. People that didn't love you at the time, Lord. People that hated you. People that didn't want you to be here. But you loved them anyway. That is love. And Lord, you've shown us what love is. And we are so thankful for that. And we thank you today, too, that that's not where the story ended, Lord. And as we celebrate Christmas, we never forget Golgotha and the empty tomb. And that you are glorified back in heaven at the right hand of God. Seated next to him, Lord. And that all glory, praise, and honor is yours. And your name is above every other name. And at your name, every knee will bow in heaven and earth and under the earth. And every tongue will proclaim that you are Lord to the glory of God the Father. And we thank you for that and praise you. Praise you, Lord Jesus. We want to lift you up and worship you today because you are due all blessing and honor, glory, and might. Lord, we thank you for this time of the year and may the love that we have been shown from you and that we have for each other because of your spirit moving among us, may we not keep it here. May we not keep it to ourselves. Lord, we want your love to shine through us. We want your love to go out into a world that so desperately needs that love. Sometimes, Lord, I don't even think they know what they're looking for, but we have the answer to that place that's deep inside each one of us that says, there has to be something more than this. Help us, Lord, to give them the hope and the love and the joy that you alone can offer them. May we be the ones, if you would be willing to use us, that can help someone maybe meet you today in this week and during this season. Lord Jesus, we pray your blessings upon us. We pray that you would be here with us, fill us with your spirit. Fall in a new and powerful way like Pastor Brian as he opens up your word to us this morning. May our hearts be open. May our minds be open. May we be ready to hear the words that you have to say to us today. And Lord Jesus, we just want you to take pleasure in everything that is said, done, read, saying, and thought here today. May it bring glory to your name. We thank you and we praise you. Amen. Let's stand back up with us. Angels we have heard on high.
favorite things about uh, having those <coughs> kids happen on Sunday morning is when about two and a half minutes before the gathering begins, there's a messenger that gets sent to me. It says, hey, we just want you to know we're going to be popping balloons. It's not gunshots. <laughs> right? That's what I heard this morning. So I have, I have no idea what's going to happen, but I want to warn you. I'm thinking that was Fellowship Kids that I was being warned about. But uh, they're going to be popping balloons at some point, potentially uh, today. And uh, so nobody be scared. It'll be all right. Are you uh, glad to be here this morning? Yes. yes. Um, are you glad to just pause in the midst of the Christmas chaos and busyness and all that goes with it and just sing to Jesus? You know, I, I don't know about you, but you've probably had the... The, you know, nothing but Christmas music going in the car because every radio station on the planet is playing nothing but Christmas music and that's all you get. Amen. <laughs> Some of you are excited. Some of us are done with Nat King Cole. I'm just saying, right? But uh, isn't it nice to be able to come and, and be able to sing Christmas songs that truly speak of the whole reason for the season to begin with? Don't misunderstand me. I'm not against Frosty the Snowman. You know, we're, we're, not, we're not, not putting those things down. But there's, there's something extra special. There's something that's actually meaningful. Something that communicates a real difference. When we sing about King Jesus coming to earth as a baby for us. Amen? So I hope that you've been blessed by that today as you've been able to participate in that. And maybe some of what you heard today musically was, was new for you. And you're going, I'm not real sure how the melody of that goes. I'm, I'm not real sure how to, how to sing along with the team on that one. You, did you know that that's okay? That the words that are on the screen for us can still be coming from the depths of our hearts? And that we can say, God, I, I don't exactly know this one yet. This one's foreign to me, but I still believe this. Mm -hmm. This is still true to me, Lord. This is, this is still my prayer and my praise to you this morning. And I pray that you got a chance to do that. Well, we are wrapping up, in a sense, uh, our, our Advent season series. Now, we still have Christmas Eve to come. Don't, don't, don't check out on me yet. But we are spent, been spending four weeks starting our ending today on preparing for Christmas. And today I want us to look again in Luke chapter 2 as we look at uh, the shepherds, uh, the shepherds in our story. We have taken the time to look at Zechariah and we, we looked at what God might be doing in pre preparing us as we wait in the silence and, and everything because Zechariah's mouth was shut until John the Baptist was, was born. And then we looked at Mary and Elizabeth and how, how God might be preparing us in a season of waiting as well. And then we're going to continue today by looking at this in the sense of preparing in the darkness as we look at the shepherds. So if you want to grab your Bibles, whether it's your Bible app on your phone, your hard copy of your Bible, or you're saying, oops, I forgot it. Guess what? We love you here at Fellowship Community Church. It's on the screen right behind me as well. Starting in verse 8. It says, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. 
So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen them, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Preparing in the darkness. The shepherds, it was nighttime as they were out doing their job, watching over the flocks by night, as the text says. And if you were a shepherd, it was it was darker than the night sky. Really, and your life was really full of darkness because as a shepherd, you were considered the bottom of the total pole of society. You were distrusted. Nobody wanted to be around you. You were considered lower than a second-class citizen. The religious practices of the day of which you provided the lambs for, all of, the, all of your hard work was what was actually bringing about the sacrifices that were taking place in the temple. But yet you as a shepherd yourself, you really could not participate in that worship because you were dirty, you were smelly, you were unclean by religious standards of the day. And so these shepherds were really just a group of outcasts a group of misfits, a group of people who were misunderstood and nobody even tried to understand. They were just deemed to be less than. That has to be a dark place, does it not? That has to be hard to go through life feeling as though you've been forgotten, that nobody really notices you. Nobody really even cares what's going on in your life. And yet, <laughs> in our text today, God sent his angels to bring a message that will cause great joy for all the people to the outcasts. Jesus showed up in the midst of the darkness, not only the literal darkness, but in the darkness of their lives. And so today I want us to take a look at what this really means for us and, and, and what we can glean from this today. So today I want to point out three things. The first one is this. In the darkness, the light is good news. In the darkness, the light is good news. Now light exposes things and that can get a little scary if we're honest. Right? Sometimes we know what's behind the closet door, and so we just keep it shut and keep the light off because we don't want anybody to see. And I couldn't help but think of that very thing as we encountered the shepherds because it said the angels showed up and they were terrified. The light of the angel, the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said, don't be afraid. I'm actually bringing good news to you. How many times is the darkness in our life the very same way? We've been in that darkness for so incredibly long that we've grown accustomed to. it. We've become crazy familiar with how it all works out and what each and every day is going to bring in the midst of that darkness. It's what we're used to. It's, it's what we're comfortable with. And so when the light shows up, our natural reaction, that, that gut response is terror. It's fear. We're afraid of, of all that might happen around us. We're, we're afraid of all, where all that light begins to shine because that might mean things are changing. That might mean I need to do something different. That might mean I get pulled out of my comfort zone in the darkness. We grow so accustomed to darkness that light for us becomes a scary thing. But the shepherds were told, don't be afraid because there's a message. There's good news. 
that is coming and there's joy that is going to take place and it's going to be for everybody and that includes you in the darkness that's a message of hope it's a good news message and in the darkness the light is good news you know why because the light illuminates the way out I don't know about you, but in the darkness, I have often found myself wandering around, trying to find the door, trying to find the window, feeling like I'm just walking around in circles, just in a perpetual loop of stuck in the darkness. But the light, when the light comes, I can see to get my way out. You see, light comes and light dispels the darkness. See, you, you don't defeat darkness with more darkness. You defeat darkness with light. And that is why our King Jesus has come to dispel the darkness, to make it go away, to defeat the darkness once and for all. You see, light, when it comes, light makes things grow. Ever felt stuck? Ever felt plateaued? <laughs> Ever felt like you really weren't making progress at all? Well, when the light of Jesus Christ shows up, we're just like plants, right? When the light comes, things begin to happen deep inside of us and growth begins to come. That's why Jesus came. Jesus didn't come to just set us free from the darkness and leave us there. He brought his light into the world that you and I might grow into the men and women he created us to be. In the darkness, the light church is good news. The light brings warmth. <laughs> you know, think about the movies that you watch. You can't feel what's going on, but visually, they'll often try to create the sense of what the environment might be like. And I don't know about you, but just about every time they're trying to convey to me that it's cold, it's also dark. But when the light comes, it warms. It warms things. It warms things from the inside out. And there's nothing like the warmth of Jesus Christ in a cold, frigid, dark world. Amen? But that's why it's good news, because the light of Jesus brings warmth. The light of Jesus is safety. The light of Jesus is hope. Jesus said himself in John chapter 12, I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in the darkness. Church, hear this today. We are celebrating the birth of King Jesus because in our dark, depressing world, light has come. Hope has come. We are no longer stuck in the mud and the muck because King Jesus has come to set us free. And that, my friends, is good news and joy for all of the people. In the darkness, the light is good news. Here's the second thing. In the darkness, we're not alone. In the darkness, we're not alone. Now, don't judge me for this, but, but many years ago, uh, as, a, as a much younger man, we would often, at Halloween time, go visit the haunted houses. You know, go through the haunted houses. That's what you do. You take your girlfriend on a date to the haunted house, it scares the bejeepers out of her, and that means she'll get extra close to you, right? Ladies, just let you in on our trick. That's how it works, right? So we would go to the haunted houses, and you'd go in as a group of, a group of you know, five, six, seven friends or something, and, and all was going really well, but that moment when it got really dark, and you couldn't feel anybody else around you anymore, you thought you had lost the pack of people that you entered with, and maybe just now they went one way and you went another. The terror begins to rise up just a little bit stronger, does it not? Because in the darkness, you felt like you were all alone. Jesus came. Jesus came 
to let us know that the God of all creation was not going to leave us in this darkness all by ourselves. He came in order that you and I can be in relationship. And if everybody else on the planet leaves you or forsakes you, Jesus Christ will be right there by your side. In the darkness, you don't have to be alone. That's why Jesus came. That is why Jesus came. And it's hard to get through the darkness alone, is it not? Man, when we're alone, it's, it's when we find ourselves in the darkness alone that our minds begin to just go 100 miles an hour. We begin to think all kinds of scenarios and thoughts and, and, and ideas because we're just feeling like we're completely left by ourselves to our own devices, to our own ideas, to our own solutions. But Jesus has come. The light of the world has come that you would have someone closer than a brother in your life that the savior of the world would give us his holy spirit to live inside of us that we would never be forsaken that we would always have his guidance that we would always have his encouragement that we would always have his wisdom that we would always have his voice to be right there with us no matter how dark Everything is around us. In the dark, we're not alone. And you know, I was thinking about this too. I, I never, I never really paid attention before. But, but the shepherds also helped to communicate this idea of not being alone in the darkness. And, 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 and in a way, I couldn't help but think of the church that Jesus birthed when I saw the shepherds, because they had this experience in the darkness together. And when the angels had returned to heaven, they had finished communicating the message. The shepherds looked and turned to one another and said, let us go. See, they, they didn't grab Shepherd Bob and say, hey, that was scary, dude. You go see what happens. You go out there and you tell us and bring back, let us know if it was all legit. No, they said, let's go together. They weren't alone. In the darkness, they had a shared experience and they left in together. It's this group of shepherds and they went and they encountered King Jesus, just as the angel had told them. And they came back together singing and praising God. You see, that's the beauty of God's church. And it doesn't matter if you're in this room or if you're on our live stream today, there are people in God's church who have been in the same darkness as you, who have had some of the same experiences as you, who have similar pain and similar struggles as you. And that's part of what makes the church so beautiful because we're not alone. Everybody's circumstances are different, but church, we come together not to sing together so that it's louder. We come together so we know that we're not alone. We sing to King Jesus together because we're not alone. We encourage one another together because guess what? The world is hard and life sometimes just flat out stinks, but I'm not alone in this. I've got brothers and sisters all around me who will be there with me in the darkness. That's the beauty of King Jesus, right? Because when you have an encounter with King Jesus, everything changes and it unifies into one story. In the darkness, we are not alone. Here's the third point that I want to make today. In the darkness, a testimony is born. In the darkness, a testimony is born. These shepherds were treated poorly by society. They probably wanted to quit their job numerous times. Low pay, hard work, unappreciated. Does anybody else know what that feels like? 
right? So that there was a dark place to be, to, to, to get the, the, the gumption up just to go to work every single day. That's what they were encountering on a daily basis. Their life was a life filled with hopelessness. And yet, in that darkness, King Jesus showed up. Jesus sent his angels to bring a message and all of that completely rewrote their story from that moment forward. See, they, they had a hard life. They had difficult circumstances. They had their own feelings and their emotions that they were dealing with and wrestling with. But Jesus showed up in the darkness and said, you... <laughs> You are not your job. You are not your circumstances. You are not who people outside say you are. King Jesus has come, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the one that would bleed and die and rise again, that we might be called a child of the Most High God. You see in the darkness a testimony was born for these shepherds. And church, sometimes, I don't know about you, but I like to curse the darkness because I don't like it. It's painful. It's hard. It's frustrating. It's confusing. It, it's all of these things that we just really don't like. But church, it's in the darkness. It's in the darkness that we recognize the hope that we truly have. It's in the darkness that the light shines pure and bright. It's in our darkest times, our most difficult times, when Jesus becomes more than words on a page or songs that we sing. I don't know about you, but that's my life. King Jesus showed up in my darkness, and I've never been the same. Not because I'm good. Not because I'm special, but because I turned my eyes upward to the light of heaven. And I said, rescue me, King Jesus. I surrender my life to you, King Jesus. I will trust you completely, King Jesus. And in the dark, he has gotten me through. I was not always rescued from my darkness. But he has always gotten me through. And a testimony was born every single time. Not a story about me, but a story about King Jesus and his glory and his honor and his praise and his goodness and his grace and his mercy and his power and his self-sufficiency and his righteousness. Testimony is born in the darkness. Those, those shepherds endured all that they did. And it made the transformation that much more beautiful for them. In the darkness, testimony is born. You see, they left. The shepherds did. They went. They saw Mary and Joseph and the baby laying in the manger. And they, they told Mary and Joseph all about what had taken place and, and that little group of people that were there, they were impressed they were amazed, they were in awe of all that they heard but those shepherds saw Jesus and when they left after that encounter with Jesus, the text said they left praising and glorifying God they were giving God all the glory they were telling anybody that would listen to them about all that they had encountered and how it all came true just as God had told them it would. You see, when you have an encounter with Jesus, you've got a story to tell. When you have had an encounter with Jesus, you have a story to tell. And you know, I, I, I want to say this just very plainly and quickly, but I think it needs to be said. I know a lot of times for many people, 
what always gets put in front of everybody all the time is the most dramatic testimony humanly possible. The guy that was on drugs, the guy that was in prison, and, 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 and made all these terrible things, and then came to Christ. And, and that's the guy that they put on the conference circuit. And, and that's the guy that they put all over TV. But church, if you have had an encounter with Jesus, you've got a story. Because the story is never about how bad you were. The story is always about how good God is. So if you have had an encounter with Jesus Christ, you have a story, a testimony to share with the world. When you've been rescued from the darkness, you have a story to tell. When you have a message of good news that will cause great joy for all the people, you have a story to tell, church. The world is a dark place. And we have a light to bring into it. We have a testimony to share. This is Christmas, church. It's not about trees and presents. It's about the light of the world coming into our mess to save us and redeem us and rescue us. There's a story we have to tell so that others may tell the story. Amen? Amen. Church, in closing today, I want, I want to share from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. This is, this is the Apostle John and his gospel at the very beginning of all the things that, that John could have written down. This is what John decided to start with so that we understood. In reference to Jesus, he says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, i got to stop right here. Jesus was born of a virgin Mary in Bethlehem, but in ways that our minds cannot fully understand. Jesus has always been. This is why we say that God himself has come from heaven to earth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This is a message of hope for us today, church, if we will hear. This is a message that we must proclaim from the rooftops as we leave this place today. That the light has come into the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Doesn't matter what you're struggling with. It doesn't matter what baggage you bring to the table. It doesn't matter all the things that you have done or said. The light has come into the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. If you are struggling with mental health today, you're suffering with depression, or you're suffering with anxiety, you're suffering in any way, shape, or form, and with mental illness, it can be a dark place. But let me remind you today that the darkness has not overcome the light of Jesus. Amen? We can be suffering from, from strained relationships, whether it be work relationships or family relationships or even in our, our own marriages or with our own children. Strained relationships can be a dark place. But the darkness has not overcome the light of Jesus. Because Jesus has come, and Jesus can restore, and Jesus can redeem, and Jesus can transform hearts. You might be suffering from physical illness or physical diseases today, and that can be a really dark, depressing place too. But you need to know this, that the darkness will lose 
Because the light of Jesus Christ has come into the world. No matter what you're suffering with today, the darkness has not overcome it. Suffering from temptations, no matter what you might be battling through today, that temptation that's been plaguing you for years, that one that you're embarrassed, so embarrassed about, you keep it to yourself, that no one knows at all because you're too ashamed and you're full of guilt all about it. Church, you got to know today that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and that light can overcome your temptations. That light can overcome the guilt and shame that you bring to the table. Because in Jesus we find grace. In Jesus we find love. In Jesus we find mercy. And the darkness has not overcome it. It doesn't matter what kind of addictions that you're battling today. The light of the world has come. And darkness has not overcome. Maybe you're just here today and you're going, I'm good on all of those things. But maybe it's just the fact that the holidays are difficult for you in some way, shape, or form. This might even be the first year for you that the holidays are a difficult time. And it's hard to sing the songs. And it's hard to get into decorating. It's hard to hang around with other people. I know it can be a dark place, but church, Jesus Christ is the light of the world has come, and the darkness will not overcome it. In the darkness, we find that Jesus Christ becomes even more beautiful, even brighter than we could ever possibly dream. How do you need Jesus to show up in your darkness? How can you, how do you need to surrender your darkness, the things that you're troubled with, to Jesus and let go of them and let him shine the light of grace and love onto it so that you might be healed, so that you might be restored, so that you might become all that he created you to be. The light of the world has come, church, and no darkness ever overcome. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? <laughs> our Lord and our God, our Savior and our King, we confess that many times we feel like the shepherds. We have felt forgotten. We have felt like we've been treated less than. We feel like we're not appreciated or even known. But Lord, today, after looking at your word, we are so thankful and grateful that you have come. Because you came for us. The Savior has been born to us. No matter how we might feel, no matter what circumstance we might be going through, you've come for us, Lord Jesus. But Lord, we have places in our lives that can be really dark. We need the love of Jesus. We need the grace of Jesus. We need the light of Jesus to shine bright so that we might truly hear the good news that you have for us. That we might truly be transformed. That we might have hope. That we might have peace. That we might know we're not designed to be stuck in the midst of the mess. That you have come, Lord Jesus, to set us free. So, Lord, today I just pray that your Holy Spirit would move and that we would allow you to be the light in our darkness, no matter what we're going through. 
And Lord, if there's anyone within the sound of my voice today that just is feeling hopeless, may your presence overwhelm them, even right now, Lord Jesus. That they can know that they're not alone because you have come for them. Lord, rewrite our stories so that all you want for us comes to fruition in our lives. Change us, Lord, we pray, as we surrender to you. It's in Jesus' name. Oh, 
Let's shoot it over to Shane Bolt for this week's Christmas forecast. Thanks, Janet. It does seem like there's a high pressure system coming our way as we see right here on the map. Speaking of high pressure, Mitch, I never got a response to see if you're going to be joining me for church this Christmas. What is happening? Looks like Shane just somebody to to church. Hey, guys, you're live. <laughs> uh, so, Christmas forecast um, looks like. <laughs> uh, how, how about it, Shane? Is there any snow in the forecast? The weather calls for a silent night, but a holy night. There is a heavenly peace coming in from the north. Just begs the question, Mitch. You want to come to church with me? Back to you. I will have to speak to my wife when we're not on live TV. <laughs> Should we go to commercial? All right, but you better make up your mind because church service fills up quick. What do you say? Come on, come to church with me. Back to you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Breaking news. Seems like Mitch just left baby Jesus out in the cold. <laughs> yes, indeed. And mark it Christmas Eve, but the, please don't do it like that. No pressure like that. Christmas Eve, 4 o'clock uh, here. We're going to have a great time of celebration of Jesus. We'll have candles, we'll have communion, we'll have carols, we'll have cookies too. So, uh, oh, and cocoa. That's a whole lot of C's. We like the letter C at Christmas. So we, we did all the C's just for you and for your friends and your family that you would have come and be a part of Christmas Eve uh, with you at four o'clock here. And as a reminder, since we're going to have cookies, we need you to help us out with that. And some of you are master cookie makers and some of you know where high beans. <coughs> Either way, it doesn't matter, right? We just want you, if you would be so kind, as to bring some cookies for Christmas Eve that we might all celebrate and participate together uh, in that at 4 o'clock Christmas Eve here at the church. Of course, uh, our giving is an act of worship. Again, when we think about that Jesus has come and all that he has given to us, we can't help but give back in return so that his name would be made great. And we can do that, whether it be the QR codes, online giving, uh, giving in the drop boxes here in the building, whatever works for you, we try to make it as convenient as possible so that you can participate in that act of worship with us as well. Also, if you're new here, whether it be in person or online, let us know, especially if you're on our live stream today, just drop a comment in the box. We would love to say hello to you, and uh, you can text hello as well. I believe Jennifer uh, popped all the information there in the comment section for you so that you know how to do that today, too. Let's keep moving our Christ birthday offering. This is an offering, a special offering we take each year uh, because we send it away uh, we do is 50% of this offering goes to Church of God Ministries. That's the movement that we are a part of uh, here at Fellowship Community Church. And those monies go to help ministry happen all over the country. And then the other 50% of this offering is collected goes to global missions all over the world. And so our goal this year as part of this is to raise $1,000 for the Christ birthday offering. And so if you want to contribute to that, just make a note of that uh, on your check or, or let Alice Ann know however it works for you, but just communicate that to us so that we can set that aside for that uh, specific offering. We'd love to be able to send this right away at the beginning of the year. So we just wanna encourage you to try to have it by January 1st uh, here at the church and into us for that. Also, today is our big Christmas annual pizza party uh, extravaganza. How about we call it that? That's a good word. We're going to be, uh, we're going to have a couple of, of fun, embarrassing games for you today. And uh, we also are going to be wrapping all of our angel tree gifts together. Uh, we're going to get a chance to do that today. We've got wrapping paper and scotch tape coming out our ears. Uh, it's going to be awesome. And so... Uh, for those of you that don't rap too well, we still want you to participate, um, even if it's just to make fun of your rapping skills. We still want you to participate in everything today. Uh, some, of us, some of us don't rap so well, but it is rapped. Right, amen? amen? All 
All right, am I the only one? I don't think so. I think some of you are just too shy to admit it. All right, well, we're going to be doing that this afternoon. Also, uh, starting on Wednesday, January 25th, our next growth group is going to be starting, and it's going to be called the Prayer Course. It's going to be eight weeks, and we're going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer as, as a map and, and, and also as a method of prayer so that we can grow deeper into our prayer life. Uh, nobody needs to freak out. They're going, wait a minute. If I come to this, are you going to make me pray out loud in front of everybody? No. No. It'll be okay. Just come. Grow deeper in your prayer life. If you would be so kind, though, stop at the Welcome Center and sign up. Just let us know that you want to participate in this group. But it starts January 25th, Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. And then we do have youth tonight, I believe, at 6 o'clock. Students grade 6 to 12, they're going to have a great time. The kids are popping balloons today. I don't know what the youth will blow up. It'll be awesome. You just got to come and find out, right? At 6 o'clock, students grade 6 to 12. Invite your neighbors, bring your grandkids, whatever it might be. But Brenda and Jason are going to do an awesome job with our students once again tonight. And I think that's it. I'm not hearing anything else. Can we all just say praise the Lord? Christmas. Okay, good deal. Christmas cards. Christmas cards, yes, Christmas cards. You might have some. That's in the. Sorry, I choked up on that. It was so emotional. Christmas. Good grief. Christmas cards are out there in the lobby. The box is there for you. It's all alphabetized. So please feel free to take a look in there uh, and see what kind of Christmas cards have been written for you. I know we've received a few already and are just been blessed by reading the little notes and everything in there. Hopefully we'll do the same for you as well. Church, would you stand to your feet? We're going to get ready to eat and have a good time and wrap some presents. But I just want to encourage you again that to, to know that you have a message of good news of what Jesus Christ has come and done in your life. And you get the chance to spread that message all over your neighborhood, everywhere you go in the days to come. Remember to invite to Christmas Eve and uh, church know that you are loved and dismissed. We'll see you in the fellowship hall in just a few minutes. <laughs>